Welcome to another episode of the Backstage Show. I'm your host, Carl Perazzo, here on the Music Channel. Today we have an amazing drummer right here from the Bay Area, a very close friend who has played with Mars Volta. Hardcore punk band Trash Talk. What? And currently working with Residente. And the list goes on. I'm talking about drum god Thomas Pridgen. We want to thank everyone for tuning in on uh, the backstage show here at the Music Channel. And uh, please welcome my good friend, my brother, Thomas Pridgen, is in the house. <laughs> and thank I can't you. believe having you, man. I already know. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. And uh, how you been? How's this pandemic been? Well, um, the pandemic, I feel like I've been going through... Um, different hills and valleys of this pandemic because I, I think it was supposed to last like two weeks and then it ended up lasting almost two and a half years. That's right. So at the beginning, um, I was doing well. I just, you know, I kind of I kind of planned for this to go longer than two weeks. Yeah. So I just had to get my like, you know, recording chops up and like get certain gear. So, you know, I was acclimated to teaching more and recording. So I've been um, remote recording drums and Working out, going to the gym, seeing my family. I, I don't think I've seen my family or had, you know, built this relationship up with them as much as ever this time. Like, this is the most I've ever been with my family. So I've been just mainly with them and gardening and um, going to the gym, practicing and recording drums and teaching a lot of kids on Skype. I teach a lot of people on Skype, which has been cool. And it's, um, I think it's kind of like, you know, you get to, you know, talk to people that you wouldn't necessarily always talk to and get more of an in-depth understanding of, you know, your community as far as like people who are your fan base. So I've been doing that and playing gigs around town as much as we can. At first it started off being remote, you know, li like live streams. And then now we started playing outside and yeah. then we started playing indoor with masks and then yeah, right. now the masks are off. So it's been a lot of hills and valleys, but um, I'm excited to still be here. You know, my family's still here. I haven't had any crazy family issues, so yeah. I'm happy about that. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, this pandemic, you know, it, it's uh, kind of made, kind of made, you know, cats visit themselves a little bit more, you know, and, and, and take up ho hobbies, you know, like mm. my, mine was jewelry and I did, I learned how to cook too, you know, and yeah, family, you know, you just, just hang out with family and we learn a lot because in, in our, in our, in our field, we're constantly on the road. You know, so we miss, you know, birthdays, weddings, funerals. Everything. Everything. Graduation. <laughs> holidays, every holidays, holiday. Holidays, yeah. yeah we're, we're, we're out and yeah. about, you know. And so and and so you've been practicing, too. Yeah, I've been practicing oh, on man. pads, and I've been practicing. <laughs> what just else because, can you practice? Well, man? just because for me, I just wanted to, like, come out of this, you know, killing. I'm like, when this is over, I'm going to be in shape. I'm yeah. going to be killing. And yeah. um, just wanted to be healthy, you know. Yeah. I take my vitamins, going to the gym. I was going, at first I started off at Planet Fitness. And then I moved on up to city sports. So I'm at, oh, I'm at city sports and everybody's all serious about lifting. So I've just been there. and um, That protein milk or whatever? Yeah, I've been yeah. doing uh, muscle milks. Muscle and milks like, yeah. Just like I feel like, you know, it kind of made me kind of want to go into a, um, maybe like a, a, a musician and fitness and health you know, area right. because I feel like, you know, just like when you, when you play drums, you have to think about posture. You That's have right. to think about preserving your... Um, just health, you know, you people, you know, you want to party and you're always at a bar. So drinking is a thing. So it's like I tried to just, you know, try to stay healthy. I saw a lot of people started drinking every day. They just at the house just drinking yeah, every day. So yeah, I'm like, I can't do that. You yeah. know what I mean? Not so every day. Yeah. I just tried to make it productive. So, you know, mentally I was in a good place. I got my PS5 chops. I got, I got those chops too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my new PlayStation PS5, yeah. I got those chops. No, I, I was trying to do a little practicing and, you know, just a, a lot of it was uh, just, you know, what was around, you know, and everything. It's crazy. It's like 
sometimes it's uninspiring, right? So what, what do you got to do, you know, to be inspired? You know what I mean? Well, what I do is I just practice something else. Like, you know, like you might have like, you know, playing chops, this might be one thing. And then one day you might just want to practice time or maybe playing to a style of music you never played to. So my practicing kind of consisted of me trying to get a good drum sound for like recording with people. So I would sit there and just sometimes just set up drums and go through snare drums and find myself just still on drums, you know. Um, I know you met my grandmother when she was alive. So my yeah. grandmother, when she, when I was young, she would just buy me snare drums or she would buy me like cowbells or cymbals. And it just always kept me playing drums. So yeah. sometimes you're practicing like, like without even really knowing it, you know what I mean, subconsciously. So just being on the drums was important. You know, I feel like people were so trying to figure out monetarily how they can succeed or win. So with me, it was like, I know that I can do this. So I just tried to just keep my mind on music, you know, praying that some way I could get back to what I was doing or maybe change it up. Like, how can maybe I could flip this and maybe, you know, I want to do a podcast or do I want to be on Twitch or, you know, what right. I mean? so these mindsets went through my mind. But I kind of just stuck through to what I knew, which is teaching and recording and trying it's easier. to. easier. Yeah, because you know easy. it, you know. Yeah, there's, there's, not, there's not much of a learning curve. There, yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you mentioned your grandma and. and uh, we 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 do miss her. We all miss yeah. her, man. Grandma Addie, right? Yeah. And um, and uh, wow. And that that's really how that's really how I met you. Mm -hmm. It's through your grandma. And uh, that was at the Nam show. We used to have a lot of fun, man. Mm -hmm. You and Tony Royster, man, running around. Yeah. <laughs> just like, have you seen? Tony? <laughs> like, oh man, I don't. Know. I haven't seen the kids, but you guys used to run around like crazy, man. Yeah, we we was at a we was at a uh, at a toy store, pretty much. You know, seeing everything yeah. we ever seen how in our life. How was that? Man, um, me and Tony met when we were like 10, 11. At least And that. so we used to be at NAMM show at like 9 or 10. Yeah, and, I remember. You know, I remember. you look at the modern drummer, you look at the drum magazine, rest, in God, rest in peace drum magazine, you look at the drum yeah. magazine, and you get to see like all this gear, and you get the NAMM show, you see it in, in full time, in real time, with lights on it. And, wow, man. You know, NAMM show. I just, yeah, I just remember seeing you playing, I would see, you know, Dennis playing, and you get to meet remember all the your, Sabian parties? Yeah, you meet what? all the... E, all the grades you meet, Harassi, oh. I remember meeting Tristan Bodian playing exactly. with the Wild Clams. I just yeah, remember all exactly. the parties. Yeah, Cecilia in the yeah. Wild, the Wild Clams. <laughs> Joey Heredia. Joey Heredia, yeah. Yep. Oh, my God, we used to have some great time. Late nights over there, man. Yep. Late night, And you hung, man. I tried. Yeah, you, you hung. You hung heavy, man. Yeah. You hung heavy. And, and I think, you know, if it wasn't uh, for, for Grandma uh, planting this kind of inspiration on you, it's important because things are a sign of design, you know, and she just had an amazing personality that was infectious, that everybody in the business knew her. Now, even more so than the musicians, yeah. everyone in the top business people knew grandma. Yeah, she just is a, she just had a nurturing spirit and she was also a musician. She just had kids, so she had to work. So when she saw that like I wanted to play music, she just was like, "Yo, I know how to get him to play music cuz that's what she was already doing. She just had to have a family." Yeah. So uh, yeah, she she was smart, you know, just like and she saw that I like I, I honestly met a majority of guys just looking at magazines. So I felt like I oh, knew yeah, people right. just from looking at DCI videos or looking at magazines. And so, you know, when I saw you, I was like, oh, that's Carl. Because I seen you with Raul. I seen you doing like duets. Yeah. I seen you with Alfredo, um, you know, live Carlos Santana. So I was already engulfed in, in it just by watching it. So when I see you in person, I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, I'm meeting people that I'm already inspired by musically. So she just, she just let me do my thing. But she also was like, she had the right energy as far as like nurturing me into doing it and not really forcing me to do it. She just knew how to That's just right. give me enough to just can, can well, go to the next level is what it, I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny you said, uh, you you watching us and and because now we're watching you, and and uh, I, I I can't tell you how, how proud I am. I mean I, I mean we're friends and and, and that and, and those words that, that come out of my mouth they, they don't come lightly. Um, uh, just to see what you've done with um, Mars Volta and what you're doing with you know Residente now and and 
man, you mentioned Snoop Dogg earlier, man. And what a what a life. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe I'm still here sometimes. I'm like, man, I'm still here. Yeah, it's just crazy because yeah, yeah. you like because you know when you're doing it, you're doing it from an honest place. You know, yeah. sometimes when you watch artists you don't know what the place is. You're like, are they trying to get a bag? Or are they like just, you know, in it just because it's a thing to do? Right, right. But like when you're, it's your lifestyle, you know what I mean? And it worked, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like think about how long you've been doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know right. what I mean? It's like, dang, this is a lifestyle. This is not just like a thing that I started doing, right. you know what I mean? Even the people you play with, it's like, it's a family, it's a lifestyle. It's like, That's right. without them, I don't even know who I am, you know, so. It's a certain kind of communication that we have, Yeah. right? And I, I was uh, I was doing a little little homework, you know, and uh, I come across this video. I mean, I see a lot of videos, man, but uh, and there there's a lot of them, and some of them are just, man ridiculous. But the Zildjian day. I was blown away, man. Like your approach, how you cut the corners, um, how you took the music and made it your own. You know, I, I, I think I think that's <laughs> that's the that's the third eye, and that's the that's the inner ear. You know, yeah. and and what I mean by that is that I, I think I think as you're a young drummer and you're a young musician, no matter what instrument you play, you dream of being this and you dream of, of and pretty soon you start hearing things and pretty soon you start becoming it. And once you become it, this is when the seeds of inspiration come, right? So to me, I was just like, I was like, oh my God, man. I said, did you hear that? I'm talking to myself. I'm like, did you hear that? Like, I don't know if you remember that day or not, the Zildjian I do, day. Man, that was a crazy day. <laughs> Dude, like, is it one of those things where you just showed up and then they had the arrangement? Or did you at least rehearse with the cats? Um, or? No, I, I, I had the song, but it's not, I mean, I had the song, but I didn't really practice to it. Yeah. I just, it's hard to, like, for someone to give you a song that's in depth like that and you be at the house playing by yourself. Like, it's kind of like I'm playing with a bass player, I'm playing with Mono Neon, yeah, I'm playing with Spot. So it's like the way they groove is different, and I've never played with them. I haven't spent a lot of time playing with them personally. So to me, it's kind of like, I don't know, if you ever watch the X Games, it's like when you see some of those guys, you know, go into the quarter pipe, they are like, I don't know what this is going to be, but whatever it's going to be, I'm about to give it my all. That's right. And then, so you take that energy, and then I was taking the energy from, like, just being put in the fire so many times. Come sit in. Come do this. Come do that. Where you don't yeah. know what it's going to be, but you're like, if I mess up, whatever, you know? Yeah. So you put that in there, and then there's so many drummers in the room, too, so you're messing up in front of a bunch of people, and Zildjian cameras, and then the sound. For me, I just try to go and just like give it my all and and um, I take the same approach, you know, like if I'm doing a record with somebody, I try to to listen to certain things like, you know, I try to be well, like, OK, go. OK, I hear this is coming up. So how do I want to approach this? So sometimes I'll play through things just to figure out how I want to approach it. And people be like, that was tight. I'm like, it was all right. Like, Let me do that yeah. again, you know, so. I don't know. I just I'm so used to being put in the fire, like sitting in with people all the time. And so it was a good experience for me. And I'm also thinking about all the people who ever did Zildjian Day. You know, oh, what my mean? God. Yeah. And well, then, you know, you know, you're talking about, you know, right. Will, and Will, then Will Kennedy, you're talking about, you know, Dennis Chambers and. And, all, all and I was one of the very few people to come up with a song that wasn't my own song. Like a lot of people presented a song. You know, I was like, I wanted Sput to to write his own tune for me. I was like, write something you think I would like, you know. So I kind of enjoy the idea of people making it hard. You know what I mean? Like the Mars Volta was hard. Mars Volta was hard. You know yeah. what I mean? Like a lot of situations I'm in, even when I play in a punk band called Trash Talk, it's hard. They got, exactly. they got one minute songs and I got to learn like 30 of them. And so they all start to blend in to be the same song. So I have to like create mental notes for myself. And That's so right. all these different aspects from like playing in jazz band and Playing in the Mars Volta, playing in, you know, being put in the fire, you know, being in church where you got to play in front of all these drummers. 
Like you just a put it all, of yeah, you just put it all into one thing, and you just wish for the best. You know, yeah, and exactly. it, just, it turned out to be good. Well, I mean, you know, you know what it is is that you 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 have the willingness and and you submit your soul to the music and trust it, right? Yeah. You know, you just trust trust all your values, everything that you learned, everything that you saw, everything that you inspired you. You become, and, and then it becomes your music. Yeah. But like cutting corners, hitting arrangements, and going over the bar line, that's another insight. You're playing the arrangement, you're hitting the arrangement, you're playing over the bar line. Yeah. And I thought, man, come on now. Because that's, people are thinking that time is linear all the time. Like it's for not me, though, man. yeah, it's like I mean, one guy who uh, inspired me uh, for just like playing odd meters is like Steve Coleman. I don't know if you know yeah, Steve I Coleman. Know Steve, of course. Like Steve Coleman is just like, you know, you you be listening to his music, but you think it's a time signature, and the whole time they're just playing claves. Yeah, I know. So you're, like, I know. you're like, you're like, okay, that's a clave. So when I hear seven, I hear seven as a clave. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if they like it's in seven, I'm like, okay, now I'm about to be all through it because I'm hearing it as a clave. You're counting it, but I'm hearing it as a clave. So if I can sing that's the rhythms, that's interesting. if I can sing the rhythms inside of this clave, then I can play whatever I want and hit the rhythm. You know, I'm hitting them because I I'm hearing it as, you know, as a rhythm, but I can still sing the notes, you know. So, so do, do you think it like, you know, tuck it, 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 Or like, uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 which gives oh, yeah, you way much more space in the middle of it. Cause, you I know see what, what you're mean? saying, yeah. So I, I look at it like that. So if it's a part that's doing that, now I need to figure out how does it go to the next section. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I look at it. I try I, to. I talked to different cats like that too. And Giovanni said, told me one time, he goes, no, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't really count the seven, you know, I count it like. You know, one, two, three, four, one, two, mm -hmm. three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Like, oh, what the hell? Yeah. It's the you same know. thing. Yeah, they, 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 everyone has a, a way of listening, right, and hearing, mm -hmm. and, and, and trust yourself to guide you through, you know. Yeah. But it, it's funny that, you know, probably most of, you know, your work, oh, well, outside of, you know, well, I don't know, especially my work, my, all my work's in four. You know, and that's yeah. how I make a living in four four. So, but you know, you, yeah, I know, I know you. you I just look at it as the same it. thing. Yeah, I don't look at like when people say it's in four. I'm like, cool. If they say it's in seven, I'm like, great. If they say it's in nine, let's go. You know, I <laughs> like I'm that guy who like I like I like the challenge of it because it just <laughs> man, it makes man, it nine, it know. makes it cooler to me. No, it's like the no, challenge no. of it. And then once you get it, like once you've gotten it, uh, got it a few times, and people like throwing you in the fire. That's why I say it's called throwing throwing somebody in the fire. After you've been thrown in the fire a bunch of times, it's not like a big deal to you. You're like, oh, another half pipe. Like when I seen dudes on. X Games, I'm like, I see them go blistering fast down like a, like a hill that's vertical and I'm like, God. And like, I feel like after a while, it's not as they crazy. They see it though. They see it. Yeah. They, they breathe it. They, they, you know, once that door opens, yeah. I'm telling you, it's like a whole, it's a whole vast of information that, that come upon you and, and, and you, you start to visualize things before you even, you, you physically, you can play it. You can visualize it. You, Think about it, visualize it, play it. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, make it musical, right? Like, man. Now, you crazy. mentioned you mentioned Coleman as a drummer, but who who's your favorite drummer, man? My favorite drummer? Yeah. Um, my favorite, okay, I'll do I do five, right? Okay. My favorite drummers when I was growing up, I do the ones I'm growing up when I was growing up. So when I was growing up, my favorite drummers, was, of course, Dennis Chambers, um, Vinny Caliuta. Oh my god. Gary yeah. Novak. Um yeah. I used to take lessons from Dave Garibaldi, so I used to watch his videos all the time. He's hella funky. Yeah. Um, I used to watch. Precision right there. Yeah, I used to watch Chris Dave. I used to watch all the gospel guys, majority of the rock guys, um, all the fusion dudes from Omar Hakeem to Dave Weckle to, you know, yeah. you know, Tribal Tech and yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, Gonzalo with Jack DeJanet and wow. like yeah. Tane with Branford Marcellus. So I would listen to all the jazz guys, and then I was also in church. So I would hear Liddell with John P. Key. I would hear Calvin Rogers with John P. Key and um, Ricky Dillard. Um, just everybody. People who didn't even have a name. Um, Jeremy Haynes was one, played on Donald Lawrence records. 
I was just like, I didn't have YouTube, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you said, hey, check this out, I'm checking it out, and I'm gonna go. And it used to be a website called Audiophile. Remember Audiophile? Yeah, yeah. And so I would get like rare, you know, Brecker Brothers and Niacin. So I would hear all the Dennis Chamber stuff, and yeah, man. I would also listen to Mount Vishnu. So I hear Billy Cobham. That's then the I'm, stuff. Man. Then I met Narda. And then Nardo was like, did you know I played on this one in 1973? So then I'll be listening. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I'll be listening to Birds of a Fire. I just, exactly. I was on just anything that I could possibly get. And then it started being mini discs. And then mini discs, I'll go to the club, sit the mini discs on the thing. And so I'll be and hearing Chris Dave. Yeah, so I'll be oh playing, my God. playing yeah. Chris Dave with right. Kenny Gear back to back to back to back. And I, and I was like, my grandmother used to take me around so much that I had a lot more um, videos than most people like. I remember the guy, forgot his name. I want to say his name was Raul. He worked at Warner Brothers at DCI. He used to just... Raul Artiles. Yeah, right? He used to just give me videos. So I still got all the VHSs. Yeah, he's DJ. still around. Oh, yeah? He's still around. So I had like Virgil mm -hmm. Donati when I was 10. So I remember him playing double stroke roles. And then um, Akira Jimbo and then Sheila Man, e. right. And then Walfredo. Yeah, no one ever talks about Akita Jimbo. Man. He's sick. And Kozo, rest, rest yeah. in peace, he just passed away. Yeah. And um, Walfredo. Like, I used to be at Walfredo's house. So you get to Walfredo's house and literally Giovanni be in the house. You'd be like, How do you, you know, be like, what's yeah, going right, on? Exactly. So, like, Walfredo would just show me videos of Jimmy Brantley and Raul Pineda. Yeah. And, like, and that's another drummer. Raul Daphne. Pineda. And, oh, like. Prieto, man, that guy. Yeah. Man. So I got Carito, all those guys are ridiculous. I just got to be on like multiple sides of the fence where I got to listen to jazz. I got my my um, salsa chops from Alfredo. I got my gospel chops from my grandmother being in church all the time. Yeah. And then I grew up at the same time, no limit, and like Cash Money was like the biggest rap groups ever. You know what I mean? So I was listening to <laughs> Mystical, I was listening to Lil Wayne, I was listening to Dr. Dre. So I just put them all together, you know. You sure did, man. And Let's put it all together. Yeah, you sure did. And it's a, quite a library you have, man. We're all impressed with you, mm -hmm. man. It's, you know, and, and, and thank God that you, you stay humble and, and uh, you're committed, man. You're committed. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's the most important thing. I know, I know you got some some new projects, right? I know mm -hmm. you have a you have your own band too. Yeah, I have my own band. I have a band um, with a bunch of friends from here called Big Trippin. Yeah. Um, that has Javier Santiago on piano, Julio Seto is one of the most working bass players out here, and um, John Palowicz is a horn player. And we play with a bunch of different rappers. Uh, we just finished the record. We just mix it right now, but we've been playing all over town. And then I have another project called Extra Nappy. <laughs> with um, with yeah, with um, with it. Why you look at me when you say Cause that? Because it's funny. Shoot. I just want to see. I like to see what people think. You know, so extra, extra nappy. Extra nappy um, we couldn't think of a name. Extra, like, nappy. extra <laughs> nappy, man. So, so yeah, I got a few different projects, but I still play residente. <laughs> And I still play with trash talk sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I like, I like, like if I'm playing jazz too long, it'll drive me crazy. And if yeah. I'm playing like rock too long, I'd be like, I gotta play jazz. You know what I mean? If I'm playing, like I have to mix it up. So you have to mix it up. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I get too like ADD with it, or I feel like I can't play. I'll be like, man, I've been playing rock so long, or I'm playing double bass so long, I don't know if I can play. So I, I have to do multiple things. You see like, Smitty Smith, man? Yeah, he said. What, yeah, that's man. Steve Smith. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Smitty Smith. Yeah. 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 Both hey, of them. Both of them. Oh, my God. They yeah. got some hands. Right? Yeah. Some, some that, that video. Yeah, these, are, these are guys that, that are just on, you know, real lions, man, in, in, in the business. And, and so now I heard that, that you have um, a plug-in. Yeah. What is what what is that about, man? What do you? I um, mean, I have you're a, an acoustic drummer. I mean, you're you know. Yeah, I'm an acoustic drummer, but like when I when I was young, I was like you know when I when I grew up, the the electronic drums was starting to you know get a lot better than they were because it was the Simmons. And then that's the Simmons is like hitting cardboard I, or hitting that's like what I wood. For Micah. Yeah. It was a tabletop. That's what it is? Yeah. So I remember the Simmons and then Roland came out with the TD7s. Yeah. And um, I was, I think I was like nine or eight when they came out with the TD7. But I did a video for Roland a long time ago when oh, I was geez. really young. Yeah, for the TD7 demos. So um, I've always been into them. I've had those kids for a long time. And then, but this company called Mixwave. And my friend, his name is Taylor Larson, he came to me, he's like, you want to do a plug-in? I was like, what do you mean? You know what I mean? I need to know what you mean. Because, like, pro audio is, is I mean, it is, it is connected to instruments, but it is low-key a different world. 
And so he was like, yo, we want to do drum plugins where we use your sound. I'm like, okay, let's do it. It's like in the middle of COVID. He's like, let's fly to DC and do it. So I didn't really know it, but Taylor happens to be like a prodigy, like engineer. Like he's done periphery. He's done a bunch of like wow. rock bands is in that vein. <laughs> so a lot of guys in that world know him. And he was like, yeah, I can do it. All the other ones aren't that good. So he was like, let's do it. So we, um, we got a group of drummers. And basically what we did was set the drum set up. And we would, you know, I was hitting drums all day from like one velocity up to 20 velocity. So I'd be like, do, do, for hours on the phone. Do, do, like for hours, yo. And so doing that and doing cymbals, which is ding, I let it ring out. You're like, oh my God. You're like, so. Some of it is tedious work, but like the finished product is so sick. You know, when I when I look at like the V drums and I look at those drum manufacturers that do electronics, they never feature real drummers. It's like some guy who don't play drums who's in, in some studio hitting the V drums and everybody uses those sounds. But like people who like you, like you have like your your roles, your single stroke roles are so specific that like that needs to be somewhere where people can actually access it. So I think this is like the introduction to being able to access other drummer, you know, signature drummer sound, you know? So when he came up with this and they was like, we have the technology to go with it because that's a large part of it too, to be able to do a plugin, you need to have like the techn technological like prowess really. So we teamed up with Native Instruments Wow. which is as big as it gets. Yeah, exactly. And um, and this guy who's a prodigy tailor, and they started coding sounds, you know? That's and crazy, man. They was like, what do you want it to look like? I was like, I want it to be this, I want to do that. And so we did it for, for me. We did one for Tony Royster. Tony wow. Royster just came out. We did one for... Um, um, the drummer for, um, for Gojira. We did Mike Mangini. We did... Um, a bunch of people that I shouldn't, I don't even know if I'm supposed to say all these people days, but Luke Holland, we yeah. did a bunch of them. So like now we're a company and we're dropping drum plugins and people are liking them. They I sound mean, good. It, there's a lot of people out there that, that want to sound, sound like you sound like us. Yeah. I wanted to sound like, like Tito Puente or Nicky Marrero or Orestes and, you know, have, have that sound. Right. And I, I used to try to mimic their sound, just adding tape or doing yeah. this or doing that. And, and, so it, it, yeah, it's about time, you know, yeah. because it, it it all inspires someone later on to 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 go get their own sound and be their own person and be the the next inspirer. Exactly, right? and it's dope for like drummers who have V drum sets. Not like for producers is is insane because they can switch yeah. between snares and all sorts. Exactly, of stuff. but for drummers is dope because you're not tied into the generic V drum sounds. Like you could be like, I want to have a Tony Royster sound. Yeah. And what I'm noticing now is people are doing sessions on the V drums and sending them off to producers, and they cannot tell. They like who that sounds great. What is that? So. It's, it's just a market that just wasn't here. You know, we didn't have this market, so we just going crazy with it, you know. I try to, like, get into anything that's, like, new. And fresh. Yeah, I get bored. So I'm yeah. getting into NFTs. I'm getting into the, the VH, uh, v, VSTs. I'm getting into, like, crypto. I get into, like, PayPal, metaverse. Venmo. The metaverse. <laughs> no, just everything because yeah, it's all new. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Because meta, the metaverse now is just about to be, like, a giant teaching platform. Now I can have Carl in there showing me how he hits the drum. You know what I mean? Right. You know would, what I mean? Would I be like a little avatar? No, you could be yourself. You could put the thing on there and they could see you because they could do 3D what? imagery. They could, I, yeah, I've seen some stuff you'd be Can I be taller? Can I be taller? You could change your outfit. You could be oh, taller. Shit, you hell. could change your yeah. hair. You hey, can, yeah. I mean, you, no, there, honestly, no, you honestly could go in there and and like, if you have a bunch of clothes you might want to wear, instead of put, taking them out the closet, you could actually see what you might look like before you even touch your clothes. That's crazy, man. You know what yeah, I mean? see, so no, 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 no. I'm, <laughs> I'm still learning that one. You know what I mean? I'm still learning that one. Yeah. Man, Thomas, I can't, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to have you here, man. And, love. and and just to sit down and, and rap with you, we haven't we haven't done that in in years, man. And and you're always welcome here on the show, man. Thank you. And uh, I. I guess I guess there's nothing left but for us to play, huh? All right, let's do it. Be nice. Let's do it. Let's play. Be nice to me, man. <laughs> let's play. Be nice. let's play. Thomas Persian, everybody. Love you, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. Time, man. Thank you. Love awesome. you, man. Thank you so much, man. We'll, we'll, we'll be right back.
Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there it is right there. The great <laughs> Thomas Bridgen right there. Thank you for being on the show. We appreciate it. You're a gift <laughs> to our industry. Thank you so much, man. And thank you for coming by. This is your house whenever you want to come by. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Bridgen will have all the information on his, uh, all his plugins and stuff like that and his, his uh, <laughs> social media and all that good stuff. Thank you for joining us on today, TBS on the music channel. Thank you. Woo, that's a <laughs> workout, bro. <laughs> I, should, I should be grazing in the grass right now, bro. You know?